Hello everyone, this is DJ and welcome to another episode of RC Retirement. Today I'm going to answer a question from the audience that I received a few days ago by email. It took me a little time to put all the references together in, in this presentation I'm about to show you. But this is a very good bit of info for, a, for use by a lot of you out there. And I think for the rest, it'll just be great information that can be passed on, especially if you're passing on the link to this video. The reason I say that is this can get a little weird, twisty-turvy, that kind of thing. So we don't want misinterpretation. So don't try to quote all of this yourself. Let me do that. Just give people the link to this video. So let's go ahead and dive right into this and find out you know, exactly what is going on here. All right, so here is what we have uh, from you guys, from the audience. Uh, Steve H, and, and that's a, a cha I changed the name, so that's not the real guy. So Steve H writes, would you mind commenting on the following from a National Guard site? And the following is this, 1405 time, dash, meaning explanation. For those of you on the podcast, you can't see uh, what's on the screen. So, inactive duty training points earned while a member of the reserve component that is used to increase the multiplier of a regular retirement. So, bullet points. May be used may only be used after acquiring 20 years of active service. Next bullet point. It will not be used to create 20 years of active service except for medical retirements. And he specifically emphasized med except for medical retirements in his email. So I've done the same on screen by making that red text. Okay. I think this could have been worded a little bit better uh, for training purposes, for teaching purposes, uh, for, for this channel, and I'm going to do that in a moment. The reason I believe it was phrased this way is I learned, once I found the source of this information, that it was originally created to train people like myself, to train retirement services officers in their jobs so it was assuming that there was already a baseline of information and if you're looking at the screen you'll see there are acronyms and all this other jargon and whatnot but there was no attempt to make it simple English as I like to see it so let's move on and dig into the sources of all of this so the source of the question, that, that's what I really wanted to know from the beginning. And then from that, I could analyze the source and then find out what other questions need to be answered in order to get a full understanding. So what we have here is an excerpt from the PEB Forum website. I believe that's pebforum.com. I didn't show it on here. Well, but you can see on the left-hand side, PEB Forum. You know, PEB is Physical Evaluation Board. <coughs> Excuse me. So a person posted essentially the same question, you know, or, or a question about whether 1405 time, and I'll get into an explanation of that in just a moment, whether that can be used to reach... 20 years of active service and and actually Steve H who used his real name on here and I have hidden it um, posted essentially the same thing he is the one responding PEB forum regular member and I believe he is wanting clarification on that because when I look at the sources it can also be a little confusing because, as I said, it was never designed for the rank and file. It was for the specialists in the field. So let's look at the source. 
the the original source was a 2010 presentation by then Sergeant First Class Christy Nickel, who worked at National Guard Bureau, and it, and I will say is one of the penultimate experts in retirement out there. Uh, she was one of several that trained me uh, in this field. So she did a presentation on active guard re retirement, AGR retirement. And you'll see that she uh, she quoted everything. Everything that you saw earlier is exactly what was on her presentation slide. And you'll see on the right-hand side of the screen another gentleman, Staff Sergeant Barton, from the AGR office of some state, I don't remember which, but he took the very same presentation, he was probably in Sergeant Nichols' class, took her presentation, changed the name, and used it for himself. Plagiarism is the greatest compliment on the internet or in, in government, right? So he used the same material for training purposes, and I, I believe that one of these, both of which I found publicly online, I believe both of these are, or one of the two, are the source of the previous slide. I'll show it again. So this quote that you see here came from one of these two slide sets, the only difference being the title slide, which I've shown. So now we can look into what's actually being asked. There are a couple of different things here that are being asked. Some of them sound like they're the same, but there are little nuances that still need to be explored. So I'm going to co cover all of these and try to make this a simple thing for everybody. So we start off, we've got six questions. We have, what are the requirements for concurrent retired and disability pay? That's actually part of the question here. It's not just, can you reach 20 years with 1405 service, but does that then make you eligible for CRDP? That would be the biggest reason you'd ask the question in the first place. All right. Question two, what is 1405 service? Question three, what does the law have to say about 1405 service for Chapter 61, that's medical, retirees? So Chapter 61 is medical disability. That's the you know, RSO term for it, Chapter 61. You'll normally hear me say medical retirement. Question four, what are the requirements to be a career retiree for reservists? Question five, can 1405 service be used to reach 20 years of active federal service, AFS, if the member is a medical retiree? Question six, does using 1405 service to reach 20 years AFS affect eligibility for CRDP? So we're going to cover all of these, but the answers to all of these questions, if we dig into the law and find out what it says, you know, can be a bit wordy. Now, I'm going to quote on screen, and, and this presentation will be available for download you know, from my website. I'm going to quote on screen the entire sections of law, except for one, which is incredibly long, so I just posted relevant pieces. But I'll quote the law itself on here, and when I get to the answer part of this, of this video, then I'll show the relevant portions, usually reworded for better clarity. So we're going to look at five sections of law here. Section 14, or all of these are in Title 10 of the U.S. Code, which covers armed forces. So we're looking at subsection 1414, which is specifically dealing with concurrent payment of retired pay and veterans disability pay. All right, so subsection 1405 is the next section that covers years of service and how it's calculated for federal service. 
subsection 12, 733, computation of retired pay, computation of years of service. This, everything starting with 12, 7 is, or you know, everything on this screen starting with 12 is specifically for reservists. So I'm not going to go into all the permutations of things for active duty. I'm just talking reservists here because that's the name of the channel, right? So next section, subsection 12, 731, age and service requirements. And finally, subsection 12, 732, uh, I'm not going to use that word. I'll say eligibility to, for retired pay and computation of years of service. I just don't like that word because it has other implications uh, from, you know, as we've seen in uh, social media, that I don't even want to touch that word anymore. So we'll move on. Let's find the first section of law that's part of our conversation, and that is subsection 1414. It's got an incredibly long title, but the gist of it is this is what establishes concurrent retired and disability pay, CRDP. And it mentions the criteria for that. It describes a phase-in period, which is long since expired. It's fully implemented now. But the gist of qualification is you have to be receiving retired pay, which means fully eligible for retired pay. In the case of a reservist, you've got to also have the age at which you can receive your length of service retirement. This, If we're talking someone who is medically retired, you're in two categories. You're medically retired, but you're also waiting to be eligible for your reserve retirement, which has an age requirement. So in the case of CRDP, you've got to meet the age requirement and have a minimum of 50% or higher disability rating from the VA and of course have an offset to your retired pay as a result. So next requirement, moving on, you'll notice there is in section 1414, well, you'll if you're not on the, the video, you can't notice it, of course, if you're on the podcast, but in section 1414, there is a section, a specific carve-out, special rules for Chapter 61 disability retirees. And when you look back at the presentation or on the screen, you'll notice I've highlighted in red certain portions of other sections to which this is referring that's why this is actually taking so long. It's not a quick yes, no, because you look in one place and it refers you back to somewhere else. So you end up having to look in multiple parts of law to get the answer. And remember, you know, just for clarity, I am not a lawyer. I'm just someone who reads the law and interprets it based on my understanding and my experience. An actual lawyer might say something different, so please do not take anything I'm saying as legal advice. This is just my interpretation. All right, so there is a special rule for medical retirees, and I'll get specifically into how that affects things you know, as we progress. Let's move on to the next part of law. Uh, this is subsection 1405. There's actually a video I've posted about 1405 service and how it works. This usually is taking all of your inactive duty training points and crunching them all together for a total and making additional years, months, and days of active duty service out of it. As you saw in the first bullet point, it can't be used to reach 20 years of active service. It becomes essentially a bonus once you have 20 years of active service. However, let me just go right back to the 1404. All right. The retired pay of a member under Chapter 61 of this title with 20 or more years of service otherwise creditable under section 1405 of this title or 20 years of service computed under 12732 don't worry about that 
well, we will get to that. But anyway, it's saying if you have 20 years of service under either of these rules, then you will have less of a reduction in your retired pay. But notice it does also say on the you know, second half of this section here, you know, but only to the extent that the amount of the member's retired pay exceeds the amount of retired pay to which the member would have been eligible under any other provision of law. So, so if your retired pay from, mil from medical retirement is greater than your reserve retirement, that amount could still be subject to offset. It just depends on how high the numbers go. We won't focus on how the offsets work on this video. So moving on, we've already touched on 1405. So let's go real quick to the, the 12s, the sections of law specific to reservists. So next we have subsection 12731, age and service requirements, which has a couple of simple rules. It has attained the eligibility age applicable to that person and has performed at least 20 years of service under subsection 12732, which I'll get in a moment. And since the age of eligibility for retired pay is referring to another section of 12731, I put that on here as well. The eligibility age for purposes of this section is 60 years old. Now, of course, there is a, another section of law that states there's a reduction to the retirement age for certain periods of active duty performed after 28 January 2008. I've covered that in previous videos. I'm not going to harp on it today. So tw subsection 12732. This is eligibility for retired pay and computation of years of service. And this essentially is how do you get the total number of years, months, and days that are used for the retired pay formula. We talk about retirement points a lot, but based on this section of law, which I'm just flipping through slides here to, to get through the end of this section, but based on this section of law, the essentially what happens when your packet for pay gets to Defense Finance and Accounting Service it, well, actually, this could be even calculated at your branch of service before it gets to DFAS. It, it varies from branch to branch. But they'll take your total retirement points and convert it to years, months, and days. So if you have 360 retirement points, then that's going to be one year of equivalent active duty service. All right. Again, not going to get into all the mechanics of that, but 12732 is talking about how to how to figure out the multiplier for retired pay. All right. Subsection 12733 is also talking about computation of years of service, computation of retired pay, how all that works. I'm not going to read all this. I'm just going to show the slides on the screen for a moment. And of course, this presentation is available for download. So we've looked at all the law. Let's go through the questions one more time and, and answer each of them. Find out what we have based on what's in the law. So question one, what are the requirements for CRDP? Basically, that is 20 years or more of qualifying service eligibility for retired pay based on that length of service. This does not mean eligibility for medical retired pay. Different animal. Three, eligible for veterans disability compensation for a qualifying service connected injury. And finally, a rating of 50% or higher from the Veterans Administration. You have all of that then you're eligible for concurrent retired and disability pay. Let's move on to the next question. What is 1405 service? And my words here are, it's a, it's a computation of all creditable service 
by actual number of duty days to determine the total years, months, and days of equivalent active duty service. So it's a number crunching game. That's all it is. That's 1405 service. But when 1405 service is used in retirement discussions, it's talking about specifically inactive duty training points being added to total service. The law itself is talking about total service. But the way that it works in our conversations when I ask, is your 1405 time part of your total service calculation, then I'm specifically saying, is your inactive duty training time being considered when calculating your total service for whatever benefit? Moving on. What does the law have to say about 1405 service for Chapter 61, Medical Retirees? And as I, mo as I pointed out, there are some notable exceptions in the CRDP law for medical retirees, both in the VA offset and the calculation of 1405 service. There are some cases, when you do the math, in which a Chapter 61, a medical retiree, could be eligible for an active federal service characterization for the purposes of CRDP. This does not mean the person is eligible for an active duty, you know, a 20-year retirement. It just means they have the equivalent of 20 years of active duty service for CRDP purposes. You know, this is where the numbers get really weird because, well, this says I have 20 years active duty. Yes, but we're talking about different uses of CRDP. Um, correction, different uses of 1405. This total calculation for CRDP purposes is only for medical retirees. In fact, what I'm going to show on the screen here is actually an excerpt of my own retired uh, medical disability order it has a section which shows total service for basic pay and in that case it was 24 years 7 months 13 days disability retirement this was how many days of active duty I had total across my entire career so I had 24 years total in the military and 14 of that was active now, when you take all of those inactive duty training points that I had and crunch them down and add them to my total service, my section 1405 service was 16 years, 4 months, 12 days. So, what the whole thing going on here is if you have more than 20 based on the section 1405, then you can use that for CRDP purposes if you're a medical retiree, not as an active duty retiree. So what are the requirements to be a career retiree for reservists? 20 years of qualifying service and attainment of age 60, sometimes lower. Next question, can 1405 service be used to reach 20 years of active federal service if the member is a medical retiree? So I've pretty much answered that already, but I wanted to state it plainly. The answer is yes. You know, this service, this total service can be used to attain eligibility for CRDP by allowing, as the law says, 20 or more years of service otherwise creditable under 1405. This does not, again, this does not qualify the retiree for a pension under 20-year active service rules. Next question. Does using 1405 service to reach 20 years AFS affect eligibility for CRDP? So this is going back and forth, back and forth. So the original question, can 1405 service be used to reach 20 years active service as a medical retiree? Yes. That then means, can you use that to apply for CRDP? Also yes. So the answers I've put on these slides are mostly the same, but just keeping everything separate, 
the same words can be used to answer different questions. And please note that if a reservist has 20 or more years of 1405 service time, that would also mean that the reservist has has more than 20 years of service total. So this person would be eligible both ways, either as a length of service if they wait until 60 or for equivalent active duty service based on subsection 1405. So that person's in an interesting predicament. And the real difference between the two is the active duty retiree or equivalent active duty retiree would be able to qualify for CRDP immediately. The reservist, if he's a pure reservist, like in my case, the pure reservist would have to wait until age 60 or thereabouts in order to qualify for CRDP. That's the main difference. So the long and short some medically retired service members can use their total service crunched down to qualify for CRDP. And that's a good thing. And that's the end of the presentation and the end of my video. So if you found this information useful, please pass it on to other people out there who could benefit from this information. If you would like to support my efforts on this channel, then please consider going to patreon.com slash rcretirement and choosing any level of support there. Please be aware that if you choose the $25 per month amount or higher, then any time you choose to contract my services to help you out on a personal nature, I'll give you a 20% discount on those services. Also, you can check rcretirement.com for a wealth of other resources as well as my fees for service page to uh, see what services I do offer. Please be sure to like and subscribe uh, to like this video, subscribe to this channel. That helps the YouTube algorithm and helps other people find me and get the information into the right heads. That's what we want ultimately is for people to be able to make informed decisions. And lastly, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please put those in the YouTube comments below. Or if you have suggestions for future videos, I would love to hear those, either in the comments section or if you want to be a little less public, you can contact me at dj at rcretirement.com. Once again, that's dj delta juliet at rcretirement.com. As always, thank you for spending your time with me. I greatly appreciate that and look forward to answering your questions in the future. Until then, have a wonderful day.